It's Spacey Sims, and we are back with more Steam Prison, and we are just picking up where we left off. So, the next morning... I'm... <coughs> sorry, wow. I was not prepared for Elkreed's voice right now. I'm sorry, Your Holiness. Ulrich was supposed to bid you farewell as well. Still not prepared for his voice. It's okay, we'll fall into it. It's alright. He hates my guts. And please take this an apology. And this is... A collection of different varieties of chocolate. We present them to customers in my bank, but they're quite good. You'll surely be bored in the lift. Please pass the time by eating them. We're gonna be like 400 pounds by the time we get back to the Heights, Elkreed. Thanks a lot. And thank you very much. This isn't enough to last the journey up, though. St. Yune! But it isn't. You know how much I can eat. But... <laughs> as I expected you to say that. Which is why I have enough for a year here. Whoa. Th that's a lot. Yes, it is. It's too much to carry. Most likely, yes. I wish you luck, attendant. St. So, Yudai, there are limits, you know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Elkreed, I don't need a year's supply either. Can you pack something up into a size she can carry? Yes, I already have. You have? Then why this mountain of chocolate? Merely to calm the waters. Elkreed smiled. What a mysterious and eccentric man. I'm sorry, what you meant to say is, what a beautifully eccentric man. Yes. Oh, it looks like they've finally arrived. Have a nice journey. <coughs> I'm sorry. My throat is like... Good morning, Your Holiness, Spacey. Finn, Serena's. What? I hate Finn. Fuck Finn, okay? Uh, everybody likes Finn. I... You can't fool me with that adorable face. Like, look, I'm being sweet and innocent. You'd soon stab me. I'm just saying. And thank you for coming so far to accompany us. That's all right. I hear there was an incident yesterday. Are you injured? Of course not. My time with Elkreed was good, too. As you can see, I'm perfectly healthy. I see. We're grateful for what you did, Elkreed. Oh, no. One rarely has the chance to house a saint. I appreciate this valuable experience. Finn and I will assume the responsibility of escorting these two to the lift. Finn, stay alert. I will. I'm surprised you came here to escort us. This is a little like it was back then. Yes, it is. Back then? Finn came to pick me up every morning when we were still in the police. He didn't even live nearby. Uh-huh. I, uh, like taking walks. It's good exercise. I was so in love with her that I'll kill anyone who gets in my way. Perfect! Yune's in your way. I'm totally in love with him. Kill him. Oh, it didn't work? All right, whatever. Bye, Finn. What? The tolerance for Finn is pretty low. Like, he's had his moments where you're like, okay, and I'm sure his route will be like, oh, it's charming and wonderful, but it's, it's gonna be salty. Because of all the shit that he's pulled and all the rest of these, so... I don't trust you. Meanwhile, I'm that crazy bitch who's like, um, but I want to Sasha and Ralph. <laughs> but look, I signed up for that. Well, if there was a route for Sasha, I'd be signing up for that fucking crazy, okay? I didn't sign up for this crazy. I don't know. Uh-huh. Right. Well, whatever. Sir Inez, let's go. It's like funny because he's like so fucking jealous. He's like, uh, yeah. Okay, she's my attendant. Roger. Be careful on the way. I miss you forever. Don't leave me! <laughs> if you're here, you should have at least said goodbye. Ulrich. Shut up. I hate Sakie. I'm not gonna say goodbye, you idiot. Chicken. Shut up. Beef. What does that mean? Anyway, I'm glad he's gone. He's one of the few people related to you. I think you should try getting along. Related? Don't be creepy. He's a stranger. It's kind of funny that, like, 
I think everybody thinking that Elkreed is creepy is just because Ulrich says Elkreed is creepy all the time. But like literally right now when he's saying that, he's like, he's, you're related to him. Related? Don't be creepy. There's nothing creepy about that. <laughs> you should embrace and hold each other. Maybe that would be creepy, but like you're related. That's not creepy. Ulrich, I don't think you know what that word means. And perhaps, but your mother's father's father's mother, well, a father of yours many times removed was his adopted brother. It's a bit of a distance, but your family. A bit of a distance? Crazy long distance, if you ask me. Saki is a stranger to me, more than most, actually. I see. It must be exhausting to maintain a sense of identity through resentment. Leave me alone, idiot. Oh, I love the two of them. They're my favorites. Sir Inez and Finn made good escorts. We reached the station without incident. Sir Inez had been taking point and stopped walking to compare a, uh, compare a sundial to a piece of paper he had. And there's still some time. Oh, yes, Finn. Y yes? You can talk to Spacey if you want. How about it? May I? Oh, can I? No. Ugh. Yeah, but keep it short. Sir Inez and I will go ahead. Like the foot that's right there? Roger. <laughs> I wish you told me earlier. Then I could have prepared some topics to talk about. Now I can't think of anything. Oh, God, Finn. Um, I'm glad I could see you again. I think I said that before. I'm glad you're okay, too. Okay? You are, right? You're St. Yune's attendant. Am I wrong? Finn didn't know. If I couldn't kill St. Yune, then I was going to die. I probably shouldn't tell him. He has it rough enough already. Yes, I'm okay. You can return to the Heights if you serve well in the Hounds, right? I'll be waiting for you to return, Finn. Thank you. You're the reason I can stay alive in the Hounds here. <laughs> You're not crying even though we're saying goodbye. Hmm? You cried back then, didn't you? And all that is someone older than me. I guess it was an emotional situation, but still. Like, it. Finn, why are you in love with us? We're kind of fucking mean to you. <laughs> You're such a big crier. You're such a big fucking pussy. You can't handle being without me. It's kind of funny. What? But, oh, uh, we don't think of you as a man. So I'm not really sure why you're so desperate to be in love with us. Oh, man. Oh, I was inexperienced. I'm not the same man I was. Yeah, no, now you're a psycho. Yes, I can see you've changed a little. You look stronger and more mature now. You're important to me and I'm proud of you. We'll meet again, Finn. Yes, we will. Mm. The lift will depart soon. Finn, did you say goodbye? Yes, uh, good luck. You too. Goodbye, Spacey. Peace out, fuckface. Look, I know everybody loves Finn and I just don't get it. I just don't. I want to try to let... I really do want to try... Okay, we'll see what happens in his route. I'm sure the route's going to be enjoyable. Because, like, all the routes in the game have been enjoyable, even if I don't particularly care for the love interest. You know what I mean? Like, Inez's route was kind of nice, but Inez is kind of bland and boring and forgettable. Adage, unfortunately is extremely forgettable in it because he's barely in any other path that sometimes I'm like, there's Elkreed and Ulrich. We remember them because we love them and they're fucking everywhere and we adore them. And then obviously there's Yune and he, who the fuck is he? And Adage is the one that I forget. I like him better than Inez, but he's so fucking forgettable because he's never it. He's like got one line and like two other routes and then he's never fucking there. And it's like, you know what I mean? It's weird. But, and you know, I mean, I just, he's the lolly boy and I don't like the lolly boys, okay? I just don't. I'm too fucking old. And look, I like my men pretty, but I still want them to be pretty men, not pretty boys. Like, Yune's too young. I know he's 400, but it's still creepy, okay? He's a fun character, but he's also very, the lolly boys are always very juvenile. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, I'm super mature and I just have a baby face. It's like the, 
I have a baby face, but I'm also like jokey and goofy and I act like I'm 15 and it's like, no, I don't like that. Personal taste. So like, I really do love this game, but the last like half of the love interests are like, meh, whatever. You got the best one done, the first, and I, everybody else hates Elk Creed, but I'm like, no, he's like the best. He is like the most entertaining. Him and Ulrich together? Good God. The two of them? I could have played this whole fucking game just that route, those two routes over and over, listening to those two queens argue with each other. It's amazing. Anyway. St. Yuna and I were silent inside. He didn't know it, but I kept thinking about Finn the entire time. Being unhappy with the situation isn't going to change anything, but it's still my fault he was sent to the hounds. And knowing how soft he is, I'm worried that Sashin is bullying him. <laughs> Are you thinking about Finn? Uh. I knew it. Uh, was he your boyfriend? B boyfriend? Boyfriend was, to me, a synonym of fiancé. Naturally, Finn wasn't. He's my old partner. Uh, he, uh, he's my old partner. Okay, sorry. Finn isn't my boyfriend. He's my old partner. I know that. You told me that yourself. St. Yune shrugged, trying to indicate that that wasn't what he'd been trying to say. I was asking whether there was more there. More? What an odd question. More than rank two one... More than two rank one police officers together. Wow, I'll switch that. Oh, I know. I suppose so. He wasn't my boyfriend. We were more than that. Tell me more. Fucking... And, but nobody wants to point out that he's a little pervy. Like, tell me more. Come on, give me the goo juicy details. Pervert. Well, we passed the rank two examinations together. Uh... And since we passed that, if things had gone according to plan, we would be rank two officers now. So more than rank one. St. Yune, why are you groaning? Ugh... <sighs> And that came even further out of left field than I thought. Left field? St. Yune waved it away. A love, a relationship, and that kind of thing. You're both young. Did you two go out? A relationship? That's a serious crime. We would never have done that. Finn is my old partner. I deeply trust him. However, I have no feelings for him beyond that. Feeling romantic love for someone other than the one designated by the government is a crime. A serious crime. I, kn I know that it carries punishment, uh, but these things happen. It can't be controlled by law. I've never felt that way towards Finn. Really? Never? Never. I swear upon your name. Swearing on my name? Fine. It might carry weight. Well, alright. And that can't have been easy for him. St. Yune's words were mumbled. He sighed audibly. You're young. Why don't you find yourself a boyfriend or two? Y you This is horrible! You're encouraging a crime! What I think is horrible is your reaction to it. I pity you if you don't know love. Pity, huh? The lawful citizen was being pitied for her obedience. Also, you think I killed my parents, but you feel sorry for me because I didn't love... Clearly, you think I didn't love my parents. That's why I murdered them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really shouldn't feel that sorry for me, considering what you think of me. St. Yune, do you have experience with r relationships? No, I've never fallen in love. And they'll just die before me anyway. It's a waste of time to get involved in them. Uh-huh. So you want me to do something you're unwilling to do yourself? Sounds like a good example. Hmm. Yes, I suppose that's true. St. Yune nodded a few times, then came up to me. How about this, then? Fall in love with me, Spacey. I'm serious. Let's try it. His gaze was earnest and piercing. I was frozen in place. Uh, um, uh. St. Yune is ordering it. I have to obey. No, no! No way! I can't do that! Why not? Am I not manly enough for you? That doesn't matter. Unsanctioned love is a, unsanctioned love is a serious crime. It's absurd to consider you committing a crime, Saint Yune. It wouldn't be just me committing it. You'd be in the same boat. I'm your lord, and you're my attendant. And don't you want us to see this through on good terms? N no. 
If my lord proposes something illegal, then it's my duty to stop him. I see. Hmm. You're a pretty annoying one, after all. I was trying to be nice to you in return for coming with me yesterday, but I think that was a mistake. I'm disappointed. You were trying to be nice to me by offering to date me? <laughs> this is fucking ridiculous. St. Yune... Besides, didn't you kill your parents? Why are you so afraid of breaking a few more laws? That's crazy! I, I actually didn't... It looks like we've arrived. And the monkey business ends now. Monkey business? Yes. All of that was a joke. Of course I'm not going to love you. If I, as the head of state, broke the law, and then civil order would severely deteriorate. <laughs> Maybe that'd be fun. St. Yune chuckled, stood up, and left for the exit. Yeah, of course. So I think we should, like, go out or something. Like, yeah, I don't see us to go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Can't believe you fell for that cover-up that you just made an ass of yourself. Good job, Yune. Mm -hmm. Applause for that, because we don't believe it. I mean, she's going to be like, oh, he was joking, but, like, we, we know. A real us, us, not her. We know. Okay. We know what you're doing. But I stayed frozen for a long moment. A joke. Thank goodness. Love is a crime. I couldn't... No. Are you coming? Uh, of course. I wanted to know what had provoked St. Yune to make such a joke. But if it was a joke, perhaps it didn't matter. I don't have to overthink this. I should just forget it and leave it behind. The moment we stepped out of the lift, the people stirred. There's so many here. Oh, welcome back, St. Yune. A Warner, and this is such a grandiose reception. Uh, of course! You didn't come back at the scheduled time, so we were worried. You could have come down and found me there, then. W well... I'm kidding. I know the nobility wouldn't want to be associated with such a grimy land. Anyway, we're glad that you're unharmed. The people would grieve if something were to happen to your holiness. I'm immortal. What could possibly happen? But I guess I'm sorry that I had you worried. Apologies, Warner. Uh, oh, no. What's wrong? Or why are you grinning? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. So rare to see you apologize. I don't know what's happening. He, he, his voice is just all over the place. Doesn't matter. And so you grinned. Oh, that's so weird. He's grinning because he's like, "Ah, uh, it's a grimace." It's hoping you died down there, you son of a bitch. So you need a gesture to put an end to this topic. I'm tired. I cancel all my other appointments for today. All right. As you wish. Also, I want a, a reinvestigation of her parents' death. Whose parents? Those of my attendant, Spacey Testella. Are you sure? Yeah, I want to thank you for coming on this journey. I'm not going to do any of the work myself, though. You'll do it, won't you, Warner? <laughs> I mean, we already know how thorough he's going to be. Another investigation? Well, the criminal disposition notice was already processed. No new evidence is going to appear. Well... That criminal disposition notice was saved from destruction, I'm told, and normally they would be archived. The matter was also ushered through without my signature for some reason. Human beings make mistakes, so I don't expect a flawless procedure, but this is a pretty big case. The notice itself seemed fine, and I trust that it's in order. I just want to know why it wound up scheduled for destruction. So there would be no one to question it! Points angrily at fucking Warner Evans. Got it. I'll have it investigated. An investigation? I was unable to hide my surprise at St. Yune's sudden request. But why? He'd said it was his way of thanking me for coming with him, but that had simply been my job as his attendant. I should be happy, though. Depending on what the investigation turned up, it meant I might not have to kill St. Yune. And then Finn would surely be able to return as well. I hope the truth is laid bare. I followed St. Yune out of the room where the lift had arrived. I looked at him as, we walk as he walked ahead of me. He seemed exhausted, 
visibly yawning. I'm going to rest in my room for the remainder of the day. You can have it off. Go into town if you want. Thank you. I looked around to check that nobody was in earshot and stepped closer. St. Yune, I have one question. It's kind of funny. I was like, okay, run to the lift, go back down to the depths and escape with Elkreed. Wait, that's what happened when we got sent to the depths. We escaped with Elkreed and we lived happily ever after. I'm all for that. That was the best fucking ending. <laughs> I'll allow it. Um, it's about my parents. Why did you order a new investigation? I told you why. Yes, I heard what you said. But accompanying you is my job. I don't require your gratitude for it. I guess, if you really want a better reason, and then it might be a mixture of pity and whim. But don't get the wrong idea. I won't lift another finger. I'm not particularly invested in this, and maybe I shouldn't have done it anyway. Why not? Because if they determine you're innocent, then your punishment is revoked, and you'll have no reason to kill me. One less opportunity for me to die. Well, you'll try to kill me if it, even if I'm not coercing you? No, I don't want to kill you even while you're coercing me, so, I mean... See, this isn't so easy for me. Oh well, I don't have a surefire way to die anyway. But don't forget about the deadline... I absolutely will kill you if you don't try until then. Bye-bye. Good night. And with that, St. Yune disappeared in the direction of his room. You will absolutely kill me, huh? A delayed shiver went down my back at his cold demeanor. Yes, until my innocence is proven, I'm living on borrowed time. I hadn't truly forgotten, of course, but now I had been reminded of a truth I'd pushed aside and tried to ignore. I can only wait for the results of Lord Warner's investigation. I wanted to do something myself, but... I should take a walk through the town for a change of pace. I should buy him something, too. He's giving me the rest of the day off, after all. Sorry, I have to, like, adjust. My arm is, like, freaking in a weird spot. Having come back from the depths, the city and the heights appeared bright and glittering to me. The sky is just so different here. When I look up, all I saw was the infinite blue. The wind was pleasant, and there were no strange smells. I should think about how I can thank St. Yune for this. What would he like? Food. As long as I'd known him, he'd eaten everything. Liked everything. He was clearly happy when he ate, but one had to wonder where in his body the food ended up. I could try the candy store first. I took a step forward. Hey, wait! Ugh, it's that dude again, isn't it? Why now of all times? I turned around, expecting the worst. Yep. It's kind of funny that he keeps showing up, and he really has nothing to do with, with this route. You know what I'm saying? Oh, whoops. Anywhere. You know what I mean? Like, he does nothing. I'm sorry. My ma I'm sorry. Whoopsie. Oh. And my mouth. I was just trying to adjust, and my mouse keeps falling all over the place, because it's just like, I'm extremely uncomfortable right now. Um, hello there, honey. It is weird. He shows up in this and he's got no point other than he's just here. And like, hey, we introduced this character that popped up a little. We got a shoehorn him in here. It's weird. I don't know. It's him. Ark. And positivity was disintegrating. What do you want? I can't talk to you without some specific business now. We're not close enough for chit-chat. Well, I guess that's true. What are you doing here? Nothing in particular. I have no duty to report what I do to you. Also true. But, like, I have the day off, so why not talk to me? Were you in love with me, too? Is that it? Like, am I supposed to, like... Oh, I see. This explained why his partner wasn't with him. Why is he wearing his uniform? Had his shift only just ended? Well, it wasn't like it mattered. You look like you're doing well. What's it feel like to be serving St. Yune directly? You're at the heart of the temple there. Tons of ways to rub shoulders with the big shots and get special treatment. Does he like shoulders touching so much that he considers it special treatment? Ugh, it's like she takes everything literally sometimes. It was so inane that I was a little taken back. I don't understand where this question is headed. But since St. Yune's name is on the line, I needed to answer carefully. A long time ago, my father told me that servants represented their master. 
I'm Saint Yune's servant now, and I need to be careful how I represent him. I adjusted my collar, mostly to reassure myself, and looked at Ark. There is no special treatment. Saint Yune eats whatever is set before him without grumbling. He's a wonderful, humble man. I was unsure whether this would satisfy him, but Ark's eyes lit up. Really? He eats everything? Even the onions? Y yeah, he does. Wow, even the onions. He's a right saint, isn't he? Why is Ark always like this? I'd always tried to avoid him because of his acrimonious personality. Seeing this side of him reminds me of how avoidance can, perhaps, lead to mistaken impressions. So why were you made his attendant? Well, he'd just laugh at me if I told him the truth. Instead, I grimaced and said that I didn't know. St. Yune is such a noble existence. His ways are at times incomprehensible to us. I guess that's true. Man, I want him to pick me so I can live the easy life. Ark said goodbye and left. I can't say I'm living the easy life. I had, after some time with St. Yune, found a way to enjoy it. But I knew that it was all... I knew that all of it was ephemeral. Eventually, I'd have to kill him. And what's going to happen to me then? I wondered whether I was going to be punished for the murder of a saint. Knowing St. Yune, I was expecting him to have a plan, but... No, I shouldn't brood on it. I didn't want to think about what would happen after his death. Well, they already think you murdered your parents, and then you're going to murder a saint, so what are you going to do, go to the depths? I mean, that's where you're going anyway, so... We were both still alive. I wanted to be positive, searching for a solution until the moment I was forced to draw my sword. Yune's perspective. I went straight to my room after we left the station. I told Warner that I'd be resting and gave Spacey the day off. My own appointments had all been cancelled as well. I'm not really tired, though. My appointments had been attending a prayer ceremony and signing laws. And the ceremony would have ended by just sitting it out, and the laws only required my signature, and neither required my attention or physical effort. But my thoughts were too preoccupied, preoccupied with one subject for anything else. With nothing else to demand my attention, I could give myself over to thinking about what had happened on the ground. Our single time, I knew you were gone, but... As far as I knew, I was the only immortal. It would have been very unlikely to find Arsenclime still alive. Still, there was a part of me that wanted him to be alive. The last memory I had of him, from the flood, was too painful. I wanted him to stay alive so we could do more work together. After, oh, a year, ten years, a century, my desire to work with him never changed. And now... After 400 years, I finally returned to my old home. Urson Klein was alive after the flood. And that made me ha happy, but also sad. I could have come down and met him. How did you survive, Urson Klein? I accepted that you'd drowned. Why didn't you go? Oh, why didn't you go, Yune? You could have gone down and met him. Of course I knew, from long experience, that being upset with the past doesn't change it. I still blamed myself. There are many crossroads in life, and you only knew the right path after you had already chosen one. And for me, and that took 400 years. It's way too long. For four centuries, I'd lived in fear of my memories of the Flood as his descendants did their best to survive on the surface. I need to take a breath with that one. I didn't... Oh, Rick Ferry, I met someone of your blood. I'd expected to find nobody on the surface who remembered Arson Climb. Finding someone who did was a great success. Though Ulrich hadn't felt the same way, it seemed. His looks had been hostile and his behavior distant. I wasn't upset. It was understandable given my poor treatment of his ancestors. Perhaps I was never going to see him again, but I was glad I'd gone down and met him. I can thank Spacey for that. I had no official business in the depths. The things I could do alone were limited, and the law made it clear that I wasn't allowed on the surface unaccompanied for security reasons. Or at least that's what everyone pretended. I had a feeling they were simply afraid of letting go of me. 
I didn't help with daily governance, but I was still the country's priest. If the object of their faith disappeared, it would lead to strife. I asked people to go with me beyond the walls a few times, but they never did. Not until she did. We just do whatever we're told, so just saying. Species to Stella, a heartless girl who killed her parents. I was expecting her personality to be incredibly twisted, but it's the opposite. She's the very definition of a model citizen. You'd think that would clue him in, but... I'd spent some time trying to see if she was merely affecting normal behavior, but... Spacey behaved exactly like she did when I first met her. After a while, I stopped seeing a murderer in her. I started believing in her innocence. But can I? Can I really believe in that? The criminal disposition notice listed enough evidence to convict her. And besides, I'd picked her as my attendant precisely because I had hopes for her brutality. Approving her innocence would be best for her. If she didn't commit a crime, then she probably can't kill me, and keeping her here is meaningless. I wanted her to be guilty. I wanted her to be innocent. The apparent contradiction made me dizzy. So what am I going to do about her? Spacey, what are you to me exact? I felt a sudden pang in my chest. We're missing the word my there. A sharp, heavy pain. <coughs> uh. I hadn't experienced pain in a very long time. My body reacted violently to the sensation, leaving me unable to breathe. I remember this. Okay. What? The pain is so intense. I decided I had to lie down and tried to walk to my bed. I fell. I could claw the ground, but I couldn't get up. What's happening to me? It's gotten dark. I'd resolved to pick carefully, but in the end I bought a pile of different kinds of chocolate, just like before. I wonder how St. Yune is doing. It was too early for him to sleep, so he was probably eating dinner. Oh, dinner. He said I had the afternoon off, but I probably need to serve him dinner. Oh no, maybe he's waiting for me. I hope someone else brought him his food. I knocked on St. Yune's room. There was no response. Perhaps he'd left his room. It isn't locked. I turned the knob and opened the door. The room is lit, but there doesn't seem to be anyone in it. St. Yune? Right back to his perspective. I forgot that it flipped like that that fast. Yeah. Where am I? Oh, Yune. Sakihei. I'm surprised. It's been a long time since I heard your voice. I never did after I got my heart. It's been so many years. Why did you hide? Why are you only showing yourself now? I didn't hide. I was with you and inside you. Okay, the, the stone is creepy. That's what people should be talking about. And I'm showing myself now because you act contrary to my will. I do? Yes. Yune, why did you go to the depths? Why do you ask that? You can find only grief there. You should not have gone. Grief? I'm not sure. All it does is bring back old, sad memories. I tried to keep you from it, but you opposed me. You tried to keep me from it? How? The stone of God chose you, sweet child. Grief does not suit you, and so I drew you away from the death there. I'll not allow something to hurt you. Uh, hold on. What are you talking about? After so much time, you've forgotten the price you paid. Remember, Yune Sakihe, you who bear my name. Remember why you were kept alive. Creepy magical talking pervert rock. Like... <laughs> I closed the door and surveyed the room. St. Yune is gone. There's nobody here. Perhaps he left. I can't give him the candy if he's not here. 
I walked towards my own room, past the other door. Uh, someone was lying on the floor. St. Yune? I threw the candy aside and rushed to him. Oh no, what do I have to do? I wanted to shake him to wake him up. I had to know whether he was conscious. But I also knew how dangerous it was to touch him. I hesitated. St. Yune! St. Yune! Yes? Oh, good. He must have collapsed on the floor. What happened? Were you attacked? The floor? Oh. <laughs> St. Yune sat up and cackled. I twitched in surprise. Um, what's wrong? <laughs> I felt a sharp pain before I lost consciousness. It was constricting my chest, making it hard to breathe. <laughs> I thought I'd die. Die? Me? I hadn't felt that pain around my heart for centuries. I was close to tears of joy. Tears of joy? I was mystified. What happened? I don't know. I was thinking about something when the pain began, and I couldn't breathe. And then he had a dream and heard a voice I hadn't heard in centuries. Wow. What kind of voice? And maybe I was actually dead just now and your yelling brought me back. Hey, was I breathing? I, I don't know. I didn't want to touch you. I see. It checks next time. Check next time. If I'm dead, leave me alone. I'm worried about a next time. Why do you look so happy? Of course I'm happy. I want to die, remember? Touche. And it's been so long since I felt pain. I finally feel normal again. <laughs> Just remembering the pain makes me happy. I do have to wonder why this happened, though. I gestured that I was unable to help him uh, with that and looked around. <laughs> I took the candy bag and set it on the table. I bought these for you in the town. Please try them. Sweets? Thank you. What's wrong? Nothing. I just felt a little pain. I don't know why, but it's fun. I'm enjoying it. He's the first one I've met who thinks pain is fun. You just haven't met a lot of folks, is all I'm saying, because just... You're just not in that community. <laughs> I'm worried for your body. You might be sick. We should ask a doctor. No way. I'm not going to let this chance slip by. What chance? This chance that whatever I have might kill me. I won't let the quacks heal me. And again, my body is special. It'd be interesting to find out just how far they can go with it. Oh... I suppose the doctors would be in danger if they tried to touch you. Exactly. We should keep this episode a secret, all right? I'm worried, but yes, I understand. You'll need to work more tomorrow to make up for what you skipped today. We should go to bed. Yeah, I know. Good night, Spacey. Payment. Why I was kept alive. I thought the payment was my immortality. It wasn't? <sighs> that was unusual. I would never have expected to find St. Yune collapsed on the floor. He looked really happy that he'd collapsed. Uh, I'm glad he's still alive, I think so, yeah. I wonder why his chest hurt, but I'm glad he's still alive. If their immortal saint dies, the people here would be thrown into chaos. That, in turn, made me remember my own task. No, that's a different story. When I killed him, he wasn't going to die at some unforeseen time. We would be able to properly say goodbye. I'm glad he's alive. Are you ready, Finn? E e yes, I'm okay. Are you really? The man next to me was Finn Euclid. We had been introduced to each other the day before. Police officers patrolled in pairs, and Finn was my partner. He's taller and older than me, but he doesn't seem very steadfast. Maybe he's simply nervous. Or just a fucking useless pain in your ass. Look, you like him and he seems sweet and nice up here, but when he gets down south, he's fucking cray-cray, okay? Looking at him made me nervous, too. He seems kind of like a doormat. Probably in his route, I don't know. But, like, that's the way he kind of acts with how you're, like... I know in the very beginning of the game, I was like, oh, Finny seems nice. Like, okay, whatever. Like, he's fine. He was, like, there. He existed. 
We had no problems with him, but everything else I've seen is like, and I'm going to check no. I mean, how many times do I have to say this? Check no. To calm myself, I stopped looking at him and faced the door ahead of us instead. St. Yune is beyond this door. He was going to attend the ceremony for new officers. With his blessing, we'd become part of the police, an indispensable sacred profession. <laughs> it's your turn next. I gulped at his words. Finn was breathing unevenly. I poked him to signal that we were going in. Spacey Testella, Finn Euclid, this way. He's so angry all the time. He's like permanent bitch brow. Roger. Roger. Finn and I walked side by side and stepped with each other. Slowly, we closed the distance to St. Yune. Never thought I'd see him from up close. <sighs> he resembled the statue we had at home, but he looked much more mysterious in person. Would have guessed his age to be late adolescence or early adulthood, but his gender was harder to discern. His features were beautiful and flawless. And through countless days, our hard work and cooperation has flowed into pros flowered into prosperity. Only peace can guarantee its longevity. Spacey Testella, Finn Euclid, thou art new stars come from the heavens. Be the rock upon which our peace is built. We'd only been in his presence for a few minutes, but I felt as exhausted as I did after a long day. And I'm yawning for her. Finn apparently felt the same way. He had a thousand-yard stare. It's pathetic that we're both out of it now. I straightened myself and pulled Finn away. We're in the way here for the next, guys. Let's go. O okay, yes. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> St. Uni was amazing. Like... Um, the light was so sparkling, like it was coming from him. Glittering. Anyway, it was amazing. Finn was struggling to explain what he had felt and gesticulated wildly. <laughs> what are you doing? Finn smiled and apologized. Then he recounted what St. Yune had said. Through countless days, our hard work and cooperation has flowered into prosperity. Only peace can guarantee its longevity. Spacey Testella, Finn Euclid. Thou art new stars come from the heavens. Be the rock upon which our peace is built. I'm surprised you remember that after hearing it once. Me too. <laughs> it was very memorable. Finn smiled happily. We'd been in the presence of our highest sovereign. Could understand his elation. But this can't go on. You have to get a grip if you want to be a police officer. Finn stopped and I walked past him. We'll have to live up to his expectations and protect the peace. I turned around. Finn was gone. Hey, where did you go? I looked around. He was nowhere to be seen. Finn, where are you? Finn! In the chapel, maybe? The ceremony would still be in progress there, though. That's the only place he could be. I clung to this hope and opened the door. Finn! Beyond the door was only impenetrable darkness. There was no floor, no ceiling, only an infinite veil of black. What is this? I turned around and looked in the other direction. There was only dark nothingness there as well. Where am I? Where's Finn? The moment I called his name, a realization washed over me like cold water. I'm in a dream. Becoming a police officer and being partnered up with Finn wasn't recent. It had happened years ago. Finn isn't in the temple anymore. I sent him to the depths. I'm sorry, Finn. Do you love him after all? Uh. Oh. When I woke up, I was staring at the white ceiling. I was dreaming. Finn was relatively far away now, but at least losing him entirely had been a dream. Good morning, Spacey. Good morning! I greeted St. Yune enthusiastically. Uh, St. Yune? Whoa, hold on. And don't jump up like that. St. Yune took a step back from my bed and sighed. Be careful. You know what happens to people who touch me. I I'm sorry. I yeah, I'm sorry. You should be sorry creeping in my room. Weird pervert. Like, I just want to point out, people say Elkreed is a pervert. Yune is a little bit more of a pervert. It's 
fucking weirdo. And not in the fun way, it's in a slightly creepy way. Anyway, why are you here? I don't dislike him. But at the same time, he does things and you're like, that should be really even creepier than it is. I don't know. You were mumbling about Finn in your sleep. Do you love him after all? He's not answering my question. Then again, that was nothing new. He did as he pleased. I wish I could have told Finn that when he was so anxious ahead of the ceremony. I shook my head. I had a dream of him, but no, I'm not in love with him. I told you yesterday, a relationship with someone other than your fiancé is a grave crime in our country. I respect the law. I've never had an unlawful partner and have no intention to either. And yet, you didn't? And that's a problem. Why? St. Yune sat down on my bed again. Because I want to be in a relationship with you. I see. You want to be... What? A jolt raced through my brain at this. What are you talking about? I was thinking about the pain in my chest after you left yesterday. About when it hurts and why. I guess there's still an academic in me somewhere. Anyway, I had an idea. I suspected that you were the trigger for it. And even when I had that idea, my chest hurt. I ran tests on what I had to do to make it hurt all night. And I figured it out. When you did something that makes me happy or I have fun, and I recalled that, I felt a strong pain. St. So Yune got off my bed again and stared at me. My chest hurts when I think fondly of you. So I think what I need to do is fall in love with you. If I fall in love with you, I'm really deeply in love, and then the pain in my chest will become unbearable. My heart will fail, and I'll die. I think it's a great plan. I want you to test this with me. Let's have a relationship. Will this count as me killing you because I'm technically the trigger for why you die? Then, okay, well, sign me up for that because then I'm fulfilling my duty, even though it's weird, but at least I don't have to stab you. And I can be like, you died of a heart attack. It wasn't me, and at least I won't look guilty. It's a good cover. I will not commit a crime. Is there no other way we go? Let me think about it. This is a little sudden. Is that a no? You don't like me? That's not it. I respect you very much. And we're being conned into a relationship with him. I like to point that out. Like, you should date me so I, like, die. I mean, do I have to? Do you not like me? I mean, you're fine, but, like, wait, what? So I, I have to date you? This is really weird. Sure, we'll fall in love with him and everything will be happy. But how we got there is a little fucking creepy. That's all I'm saying. And then it should be fine. No! Respect doesn't lead to a re relationship, I think. Well, I think it can, though. And not that I'd know. Anyway, I think we should try it. Come on, Spacey. No, I don't think this would be a good idea. The country's priests should lead by a positive example and respect the law. Look, I'm human. I'm not a machine and I've got a soul. I can be allowed some eccentricities. I just don't have to find out. When they want to see the saint, I'll show it to them. And when they want it, and when you want to see the sinner, I'll show it to you, baby. Woo! I just wish that had come out of his mouth. It'd be amazing. She'd have fallen the fuck off the other side of her bed. Could you just imagine that? When they want to see the saint, I'll show it to them. And when you want to show, see the sinner, I'll give it to you. Hard. All night. Ah! She falls off the bed. It, it'd be worth it. I kind of want that. That'd be fucking hilarious. You're really stubborn. Are you sure you want to turn me down? I want to follow his wishes, but I was a little confused as to what he wanted me to do. Wanting love in a relationship was a very sudden and broad request. Can you let me think about it for a day? I'll give you an answer by tomorrow. Really? Promise? Yes, I promise. Okay, I'll wait. St. Yune smiled and left the room. The door closed. Silence returned. This will be complicated. First he wanted me to kill him. And now he wanted me to love him. In both cases, I was breaking the law. And in the latter case, so was St. Yune. If someone found out about his plan before St. Yune had a chance to die, it might well cause chaos. Ahem. <clears throat> now what do I do? Now what do I do? Now, what do I do? It could be said either way, I guess. St. Yune's first appointment was a series of audiences in the chapel. Ordinarily, St. Yune met these people with a serene and mysterious smile, but... He, he's in such a good mood. I'd never heard him hum before. Oh, that's what he was doing, I forgot. Everyone 
else seemed just as surprised. Lord Warner, having come to check on him, grimaced. Your Holiness, perhaps we ought to take a break. And no, no, keep going. I want to talk to more people. <laughs> Very well. Thanks. What's happened to His Holiness? Look how happy he is. Today is truly a blessed day. Yes, I feel so happy now. Good. The people realized that Saint Yune was behaving differently, but they were talking it. But they were taking it well. I would probably have interpreted it the same way if I didn't know him any better. The reason he was in such a good mood was that he thought he had found a way to die. And my own role in that plan... I don't know what love means. The parents had been married by the government, and the same applied to everyone else. Everyone except Saint Yune had their partner decided by the government. In school, we learned that this helped with population control, and we all came to accept it. I was the same... Sometimes I had played a role in the punishment of those who had been in unsanctioned relationships. That made this much harder for me now. I'd seen others punished for something I now had to do myself. My orders are to kill Saint Yune, and for that... I had no idea how love worked. Was I going to be able to do it? I gazed over at Saint Yune, still smiling happily. I think it's a weird thing it just in this game as a whole. Like, okay, so you live in a place where they force you to marry someone and then, like, falling in love with someone else is, like, a criminal offense and it's fucking weird and, like, the Heights is a creepy cult. Okay, fine. But her being just so completely fucking stupid about love. I mean, I kind of get it at some point. You're like, I don't know. I've never really been in love and, like, whatever. But she's always like, I don't know what I'm doing. I like, but, like... They have her in so many routes, like, totally clueless about, what? Oh my god, touch him, man. Oh, okay, all right, seriously, Jesus Christ, Mary Sue, can we not? It's not cute. I don't know. I don't know why they think that, like, I mean, I guess it's a different thing. I don't know. Like, maybe it's the difference between Japanese culture and, like, American culture where you're like, it's kind of fucking weird to play a game where she's just so completely fucking, like, doesn't understand anything and adage had to explain to her where babies come from and how babies are are you you're 18 your mother should like again we had this long fucking debate right but like if japanese people are playing this game or they're like no that's awesome that's what we look for because that's just fucking it's just strange to me it's like weird to be like yes i want to be a woman who has no clue i understand the like just the general like well i mean it's illegal to fall in love with someone else so why would i do that and to be kind of a robot i get it but just completely not clueless about the emotions because i again that i understand like never been in love so i don't know what it feels like but completely clueless about just factual things like sex and relationships and where babies go and all that stuff well when i am when the temple decides we will have a baby they will bring me one that's that's not how it works. It's not how any of it works. Oh my god. I just... It's not cute. It makes me want to fucking punch a bitch. Like, I kind of... That's, I think, my main gripe with this game is just how fucking clueless she is. Not, I'm really into my job and I have no intent... And, like, I didn't want to do with my marriage and she's not a typical girly girl, like, I guess. Like, oh, I dream of my wedding day. She's like, yeah, I don't want to do that. But I have to. And, like, her being like, I don't, I would never fall in love with someone that I wasn't slated to marry because I'd be wrong and against the law and I uphold the law. Totally get that. It's the, like, but I, what? I, ch baby, what? Eh? Like, it's that kind of a thing. It's how fucking naive she is. Not the, I can handle the robot part, but it's the fucking naivety I can't stand. Like, she's just like, I don't know. You're not six. You should know basic shit. Like, holy crap. But that's how fucked up this cult is that they live in. Like, I don't know. Anyway. Noon came and passed. The evening came and passed. The next day came and passed. No. Night fell and I still had no answer. I only have until tomorrow. I looked over at his appointments for the next day, still thinking about it. Good night, then. Wait. 
let me hear your answer. I have until tomorrow. In a few minutes, we're past midnight. And those won't make a big difference, right? Let me know your answer. And do you think you can fall in love with me? I lost my job, but I'm still a former police officer. I need to uphold the law. Besides, I've never felt inclined towards love. I have no idea what it means. This I get. Like, this part I get. I don't know what that even means, you know? <laughs> However, I'd like to do what I can for you. Really? A really, really... Yes. It's only thanks to you that I'm still in the heights. I think I should obey you, whatever form that takes. Obey? Hmm. That isn't a real relationship, is it? R really? Well, I mean, some people think it is. It depends. Th Yune is not that kind of guy. Nice to know. Um, should I try that again? No, it's alright. It's like you to say that. But thanks. St. Yune smiled and so did I. But I really don't know what I have to do. I felt nothing in particular towards my former fiancé, Lord Fitzgerald. Wondering, I I'm worried I might not live up to your expectations. <laughs> don't worry about that. Love is grown and fostered. St. Yune, um, do you know what it means to be in love? Of course not. I've lived for 400 years without being in love. My emotions are pretty rusty. So, like, again, I'm not begrudging her being a robot and other people being a robot. I'm begrudging her being a robot and then completely not having any clue about factual things. That's my problem. If she was just a robot the whole time, you'd be like, oh, okay. But I kind of get it. And it, But it's just, it's just all the other stuff with it that just kind of... It taints the things like this where she's being a robot and she's like, I don't understand what love is. It's under that's a totally understandable thing and that I can get behind. All the other stuff just puts it on top and you're like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, why are you dumb? But she's not. I mean, not understanding babies and sex. That makes her fucking stupid. But, like, you know, it just kind of, I don't know, it just kind of takes away from just being like, oh, it's so cute, she doesn't get it. Oh, it's funny. You know, it's more, it gets, it makes her more frustrating. And it's not the way it should be. I don't know, it's weird. We're on about the same level in terms of experience. I don't worry about it. I'll fall in love with you and you'll fall in love with me. Well, let's make that happen. Okay. And again, like, you can just be like, we'll fall in love with each other. Sounds like a plan. It's, it's not how it works, but... Again, they're being, like, now you're like, you're, you don't understand. So that's, I understand that you don't understand, but... It's also weird that then we just do? But we're forced to, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe some people enjoy that in this route, but it's just kind of like, it doesn't... It has moments, don't get me wrong. But overall, when you look at the whole thing, you're like, it's a little fucking weird. I don't know. <laughs> it's a little weird. Yeah, it is. I don't think love is something you try to make happen like this. Exactly! I don't think falling in love so you can die is particularly commonplace either. True. <laughs> you got that right. But I'm glad you said yes. I don't know what I would have done otherwise. If I refused? I had to think about it for a long time. But I promise I won't change my mind. We'll see. I don't understand people very well. So I want you to teach me. He edged closer. He opened his arms, but he hesitated awkwardly. I envy normal people. They can embrace each other right now. You know, a long time ago I wrapped my arms around an animal and it just died. That's so sad! The fucking evil, magical, creepy pervert stone in your chest is psycho that, like, I can understand if someone's trying to harm you, but you, oh, I just touch someone and you kill them? They're not trying to harm you. The stone is fucking cray-cray. Okay, like, oh, I touched an animal and I killed it? Was the animal trying to harm me? Was it a bear attack? No. So why'd you kill that poor fucking possum that I was trying to hug? I mean, right. This is how it is for St. Yune. My parents often held me close when I was a child. Even when I grew up and was unhappy, they held me to comfort me. But being able to feel that warmth must be terrible. So we shouldn't hug. I don't want to kill you without meaning to. It gave me a warm smile, but it was also a sad one. 
And that's hard. How are you going to grow your love without being able to touch the other person? Well, growing our love without a hug might be hard. But what choice do we have? Good night, Spacey. I look forward to this. Y yes. Good night, Saint Uday. That sex is going to be weird. Oh, Saint Uday. <laughs> well, I guess no different. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, I'm wrong anyway. <sighs> I closed the door behind me and leaned against it. Saint Yuna and I are in a relationship. So he was my boyfriend. That made me intensely embarrassed and I threw myself onto the bed. I buried my face on my pillow and kicked my feet. Why am I feeling so embarrassed for, for real? Nobody had done anything in particular to me, but my cheeks felt hot. How do I feel about us being in a relationship? Um. It's going to work out. Now that, that I've agreed, I have to see it through. It's alright. I have St. Yune. He will work something out. Alone, I'd feel very uncertain and afraid. But with him, I had a feeling it could work. I hope I'll be able to love St. Yune. The end. Ooh, his perspective. Perfect. So we're going to end it here and we'll start in his perspective um, in the next part. So I will see you guys next time. Oh, this fucking creepy bitch. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more. Thank you.